Hey everyone, welcome back to Remember This Tech. What the heck do we got here? Oh, it's a Toshiba satellite laptop. Somebody was gonna recycle this, um, throw it away actually, so I said, hey, I'll take it. So we got this for free. So what are you gonna do with this? Well, got a couple options. We could upgrade it to Windows 10, maybe put an SSD, maybe put memory in there, but that's gonna cost even more money. You're gonna have to buy your Windows key, you're gonna have to get RAM, you're gonna have an SSD, and an older hardware may not be able to push Windows 10 around so easily. But since this is a quad core and it still has six gig of RAM, big mechanical hard drive, let's try something new for the Remember This Tech. Why don't we put Linux Mint on it? Linux Mint is a um, Linux distro that's easier for Windows based users to get into. Um, you won't be as daunted by it. It has a desktop, it has a program manager, software manager program for ease of use. It comes loaded with software that you don't have to buy. It's always updated, kept up to date. And well, come on, let's just get into it and start this build. And let me show you all about it. Come on, let's go. Installing Linux Mint. And then boot it up so the hard drive's good. Let's reboot this machine, if it'll let us. So we got into the BIOS. Say the CPU is a A6 uh, 6310 APU uh, with R4 and six gig of RAM. So we're gonna just go down to it's USB 3.0, which is pretty new. Very limited BIOS though. Change boot order, here we go. All right, so I selected the disk drive, uh, optical disk drive, and then the hard drive, and then USB. So we'll go okay, and we will save and exit. And there we go. We are booting from Linux Mint 64-bit. Everything, the RAM, and then we're gonna install the OS from there. It's gonna take a bit, so we'll be right back. So we're just going through the install here. Just normal, choose your language. Sometimes, if you got Ethernet, Wi-Fi, you can connect it and it'll pull down patches. Um, well, I got this here, so it's got a connection. And sometimes by doing this, you can do on the fly updates from the web, and that way you will have less to update once the system's installed. I want multimedia installed. So this way it will install the multimedia codecs ahead of time. There's a few other things you can do here. I didn't re install SSD on this laptop, uh, I wanted to compare it with a traditional hard drive. Just wanted to show you how Mint was, um, the Cinnamon Edition distro. And here you can choose to install the boot manager alongside a dual boot with Windows, and then you can, or you could re erase your disk, which I'm going to do here, and then go from there. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Let's erase it. Go ahead. Time zone. Everything's simplistic as far as why you're setting it up as maybe if you're familiar with one OS setup, this is the same similar thing. Put in your name. And we're gonna copy the files. Pretty much this install is gonna install a web browser like Firefox out of the box. Um, video codecs for watching uh, and movies, videos, and um, photo editors. Uh, Libre Open Office program. You know, if you don't have access to online like uh, Google Docs, you'll have a full Office suite at your command here. Photo editors. Um, we're going to show you another thing when we're done with this install on how we're going to install Steam. This is an older laptop. May be able to play some older games, but uh, provided the video drivers are all up to date, well, we'll see what we can do on this thing. Once this is up and going, we'll do a reboot or two, 
and we'll have to pull down some patches, updates that it didn't catch upon the initial installation, and then I'll show you how it does. We'll stand by and we'll be right back. All right, we're booted up to the desktop and you're initially greeted by your setup, your welcome screen. You can choose your panel layout, desktop colors, system snapshot, and that, what that means is, is that you can, that helps you to create a restore point in case you uh, wanna roll back something that's screwed up. Driver manager and update manager. Uh, if you launch these two, Let's say update manager, it'll give you a one-stop shopping for um, all these operating system updates, security updates, software, and system snapshots. So I'll do okay right here for you, one-stop shopping, kind of like Windows Update, but better because all of your software in one place for you that you install. It's like it manages and maintains all of your software on your system and it updates it in one press the button. And you need to enter your security password to allow it to do that as a secondary precaution. And once it does this, it'll pull it down and I'll go through a series of updates and I'll put a few more software pieces on here and I'll show you what we have and what this system is capable. If you don't wanna play around with Windows, don't wanna buy a license for Windows, have an older system that you don't know if you wanna keep, you can use this and you can play around with Linux Mint. And then you see up here, you have all these things here and it's got everything, install updates. So let's let it do its thing and we'll be right back. And this particular display on this, this uh, Toshiba Satellite A6 AMD is 1600 by 900. Let's get on the internet and see how things do. We'll do some basic tests as far as the internet browsing uh, also YouTube and we have to search for it it's here this is the applet manager where you could set things from printers desktops system tray here's Firefox which is a default browser loaded with the system and uh, YouTube Let's see how snappy or how not snappy the system is it's a little slow i think it's just a 10 100 nick but let's check out this guy's channel see how fast it loads the screen is really washed out and bright i guess it's just how you know it is let's see how this loads and how fast it is and what it's like on this computer really crappy sound on this laptop but that's beside the point um, what else do we want to see all right so we're browsing the web decently um let's look at the news this is a task that normal people might do you know so it's pretty snappy as you see in here you have the full office suite libre office same thing as office and excel and powerpoint you have accessories like calculator uh, basic stuff, screenshot, text editor, USB image writer, stuff you won't find in Windows, but uh, you have your administration, you have disk analyzer usage, driver manager for drivers. If you launch software uh, manager, you can select all the different things that you can choose from science, graphics, applications, programming, games, system tools, internet, all that. So DOSBox is an x86 emulator where you can run older DOS games. That's pretty cool. So you can download that, install that for free if you wanna play your old DOS games. So there's kind of a, you won't have to set up a retro box of Windows machine to do this. Run it right off your Linux box. I just search for Quake because I don't know, maybe they have it. Look at this easy Quake. Open Arena, free and open source first person shooter. Look, Quake 2, is this free? Yeah, we're gonna download that. Of course we are. Hell yeah. So 
I'm giving you examples of through the software manager what you can search for for free, just games and stuff. You know, I you could you could find other stuff, but free Doom two phase two. Look at that. We're gonna test that too. It's free, man. This is like probably like the easiest retro gaming box you can build on a modern system. Blender is for uh, 3D modeling, rendering. You can play like 3D Razer, 3, 3D Arcade Razer. So cheesy. We have to install that too. So what have we installed so far? So you come up here and if you look, um, it should be under your games menu. It'll actually sh put it under your games menu in case you don't know where something is. And if you right click on it again, you can add to your desktop and it'll put a shortcut to the desktop for that. I wonder what's in graphics. Yeah, VLC is your, your player for everything for rendering codecs, tons of stuff. I loaded Steam and I want to see if we can get something going on here as far as a game perhaps. If you want to find something quick, you don't have it pinned or whatever, go into the start menu. It's on the left corner, just like the Windows start menu. Open it and just type something in like Steam and then it'll come right up. If you right click on it, you can add it to the desktop and it'll come right on the desktop and like here. So what I do or what I would advise for you to do is set things up on your desktop that you use frequently like Firefox, um, add a desktop so you don't have to keep searching for it. This particular computer has a 750 gig hard drive, 6 gig of RAM, and it has a 84 MB graphics. Well, R4 graphics rather, sorry. Let's launch system monitor here. And you can tell what systems are using, how much RAM, memory, resources, file systems. And here we have four core CPU. This laptop has a quad core, which is, yeah, they're running at two gigahertz, but four of them. So that's pretty nice. So this is system monitor. It's like task manager in Windows. So you can see how much resources you're using, what your file systems are taking up, what the system operating systems using and that's probably another one I would put on the uh, desktop or what have you so that being said now let's log into Steam and see if we can't uh, download a game or two so what we have here is a game on this laptop on Linux Mint what do we have here well we have Half-Life 2. The graphics look decent. We are gaming on Linux. If for those of you who don't know about that you can or you can't, well, not every game is supported, but who are these idiots? Son of a I wish they could skip this intro thing for the first new I'm playing on Linux. Somehow I don't have a save game for Linux because the save game was on Windows. So that's the downfall. I gotta start from scratch. But it's playing on Linux, so Borderlands 2 and Linux, everyone. Yay! So there are Steam games that will play from your library on Linux. Not all of them. Free operating system, older laptop, Borderlands 2. Let's cut to the intro, playing the game, and see how it plays. Borderlands, Linux, older laptop, 
intro scene playing good so far After this, we'll see what else we can get to play. So far we played Half-Life, now it's Borderlands. Then in the beginning, I usually like to look around, see if you can find some loot. Sometimes you can. Um, in the beginning levels, you don't, you don't have anything, so you either look for stuff or you don't get anything. So, see like there's a couple chests out here. We're running at 1600 by 900 on the native, uh, well, on the laptop's display here. Granted, it's not great, but you know what? I'm playing Borderlands 2 on a old laptop, yay! Yeah, there's not much to get here in the beginning, but what you can get, you should. Some extra ammo, a couple crates like here. It'll help you. You know, when you get your guns, you have extra ammo, you want to spend money on them. Like, there's a crate over here. If you just fall, claptrap in there, you're not going to get any of this stuff, so. Load up. It's not much. Like, I'm babbling on about it like it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. No, it's not. But it's more than you had. Now you're at 82% health and you had virtually nothing. So you go in here and just loot whatever you can. Anyways, it's playing pretty good for a cheesy old laptop. Yep, Linux gaming at its finest. I was able to switch the monitor to the external monitor here and it's so much clearer, it looks so much better. Well, at least as far as like the video quality because it's crisper. This matte finish one is not good. This is pretty good as far as a uh, game goes. So even this laptop, I got external lap monitor capability and I can run it in dual monitor mode too. Well, what do we have here? We have Counter-Strike Source and it's on a Linux laptop. How bad will I die? How quickly will I die? Probably very quick. All right. Died instantaneously. I can't do anything, I'm really horrible and I have a pistol. What did that guy shoot through the wall or something? Oh, that's pretty amazing. So anyways, you could kind of play Counter-Strike on here. That guy like shot through two people. Talk about cheating. Okay, so you can play Counter-Strike Source even though I suck. So there's another game you can play. So if you want to play some retro games, like, <laughs> this is Free Doom, Open GL. Let's play new game. If you want to play Doom, you got it on your Linux box. Linux Mint. It's flowing smooth. What is this? I mean, this is really cheesy, but it's meant to be cheesy because it is a free version of Doom. Yes, retro game, gaming at its finest on Linux. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, let's see what other retro games we can play on this Linux Mint box, shall we? Here's a free cheesy game like Mario Kart, but it's like a racing game. You 
Yeah, it's cheesy. Really, really cheesy. But it's free. Enough of that. Enough of that! This video in conclusion is to show you that your old laptop, your old PC, can still have functionality in use. Well, in this case I wanted to showcase Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition and that it's free. It can be run on lower specification hardware like older laptops like this one. You get a full featured suite of operating system with opti updates and it's similar to Windows. So if you're fearful of this system you can get your you can find your way around without a problem. Um, there's tons of free software, tons of productivity software, tons of updates, so you never have to fear, oh, is it going to be obsolete like Windows forces you to. Can you game on it? Mm, we played some games. This laptop's pretty old, but hey, we played Half-Life 2. I played Counter-Strike, played some old retro DOS games. That's another thing. You can play older games on here with the DOS emulator package that it has on here for free without having to build a dedicated uh, DOS machine. There are tons of free games. Borderlands 2 ran on this system. Granted, we had to reduce the resolution, but this monitor is only, it's small, it's fairly small. So this laptop's capable of supporting dual monitors. Out of the box experience. Yes, we had to do updates. That's the case with any operating system, right? It loaded all the chipset drivers for this old Toshiba laptop. It loaded the video card drivers, it loaded all that software. My recommendation is if you have an older machine like this, want to breathe new life into it, go ahead, download a Linux distro. Linux Mint is one of the easiest ones for Windows users to become more familiar with it, to dive right in and test out the waters. That's what I suggest. If you want to try it, do it. Burn yourself an ISO of, a, of Linux Mint using Rufus and load it up on your CD-ROM drive and install it. Most of the time, a simple upgrade to an SSD of your old laptop will make it run smooth as butter. My suggestion is if you want to venture into the world of Linux, try Mint, Linux Mint. It can't hurt. And then if you really get into it, you can download other uh, distros like Ubuntu, um, CentOS, other things like that. Try it. You can game on it. it, has tons of free software. Two thumbs up for Remember This Tech. Thanks for watching.